Welcome to our online carol service. A particular welcome to you if you are joining us for the first time. My name is Andrew Marsden. I'm the vicar of St. Sebastian's Church. Just as if we were in church, the service will proceed without further announcement. I do encourage you to join in the carols when the words appear on the screen. We're going to start in the traditional way by singing together once in Royal David City.
come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to celebrate the festival of Christmas. In this service we hear and receive the good news of the birth of Christ and we offer to God our thanksgiving in the joyful singing of carols. But first we pray for all Christian people that by this festival they may be renewed to fulfil Christ's work in this world and especially for Stephen our Bishop and the clergy and people of this diocese. We pray for the world which is already Christ's that those who bear responsibility for his future in politics, in industry, in commerce and in education and communication may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom and peace everywhere. We pray for all in special need during this pandemic. The sick, the anxious, the lonely, the fearful and the bereaved. And we commend all whom we love, who, are, or who have asked for our prayers, to the unfailing mercy of our Heavenly Father, and say together, as Christ himself taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid. And the Lord God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, Oh, the serpent! He deceived me! And I ate. So, the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And... I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
sing with joy, with one voice uniting. Tale is now fulfilled for all generations. Love's pure light is with us still, God's blessed creation. This reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6 and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it. With justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 5. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, 
from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David 
and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reading comes from Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived in her womb is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus.
living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and glory shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. So, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. You see them in the manger? Yeah. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
chapter 1, the Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And he eats an apple. I like apricots and avocados. Albert eats eggs every Easter. No, I haven't gone mad. Those are some of the exercises given me by my speech therapist. Some of you will be aware that I've been having problems with my voice, caused in part by COVID-19. Not being able to speak properly has led me to think more deeply about something we take for granted, how we communicate with each other. Most of us have mobile phones. They have the potential to communicate with other people in many different ways, beyond a simple phone call. There's SMS texts, emails, WhatsApp texts and calls, Facebook, Skype, Zoom, Twitter and many more. And it's likely that you've been using some of those to contact your friends and family during lockdown. But I expect you'd also agree that nothing compares with face-to-face -face contact. We all have a longing to meet other people, to speak to them in person, to exchange a hug, to be with people in a way that is just not possible on Zoom or any other app for that matter. God knows that. He made us that way. And when he chose to communicate with human beings, he always did it through people. The prophets spoke his words in person to Israel. We have their words in written form, but the Bible was written by people, people inspired by God. All that was good, but it wasn't good enough for God. So God hatched a plan. It's summed up in verse 14 of chapter 1 of John's Gospel. The Word became flesh. 
2,000 years ago, a baby was born in Bethlehem in Judea. That baby Jesus did not just pass on a message from God. In him, God became a human being. If the prophets were the divine equivalent of Zoom, then Jesus went one better. In Jesus, God came to us in human form. The prophet Isaiah spoke of Emmanuel, which means God with us. God knew that to really communicate with human beings, he would have to do it in person. And he chose to do that through his son, Jesus. All of which makes it really important how we respond to the baby in the manger, to Jesus. And I can think of three ways we could respond. Firstly, we could ignore him. Have you ever missed an essential ingredient out of a recipe and then found that it doesn't taste quite right? It might taste a bit bland. You might find that at worst it tastes horrible. Well, that's what most of the world chooses to do. They ignore Jesus and they leave out the essential ingredient of Christmas. Worse than that, they leave out the essential ingredient of life. For God made us to live in relationship with himself through his son Jesus. But of course that's not you. You're not ignoring God by joining in with this carol service. You are saying that in some way you think that Christ is an important part of Christmas. That's the first possibility, that we ignore him. The second is that we leave Jesus in the manger. Each year when I leave the crib service, I ask the children, what happened to the baby? It's not a trick question. The obvious answer is, he grew up. And as an adult, Jesus taught about God with extraordinary authority. He was put to death on a cross, and three days later he rose from the dead. His was no ordinary life, no ordinary death. Some people celebrate Christmas in church, but Jesus has little impact on their lives. They hardly ever read the Bible, they rarely pray. They do not challenge the self-centered values of the society around us. The angel said to the shepherds, Today in the city of David is born to you a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. To know Jesus as Saviour, to know him as Lord, is to offer him our lives. To be prepared for everything to be different, after coming to know him. To choose to live his way rather than our own way. So the second possibility is that we leave Jesus in the manger. The third is that we welcome him into our lives. Getting to know someone is a gradual process. Friendship grows over a period of time. Think about the important relationships in your life. They did not spring into life fully formed. They all started with a willingness, a willingness to let someone else into your life. So it is with Jesus. We cannot expect to know him perfectly from the start, but we can welcome him into our lives. We can start the relationship. We can admit that we need a saviour, that we've messed up in life 
and need the forgiveness that Jesus offers. We can acknowledge that he is God with us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows the best way for us to live our lives. We can accept him as Lord. With his help, we can choose to go a different way. His way and not ours. And if we do that, over time our relationship with Jesus will grow and develop. I won't pretend that it will be always easy. Catching COVID-19 and seeing other people suffer and die has undoubtedly challenged my faith. But I do not regret the decision to welcome Jesus into my life. I still believe that to live with Jesus is the best way to live. As time goes on, I am more and more aware of my need of a saviour. I value more and more his promise of eternal life. What is God saying to you this Christmas? In Jesus, God communicates with us in person. He is asking for a response. Don't ignore him. Don't leave him in the manger. Welcome him into your life. Admit your need of a saviour. Acknowledge that he is God. Accept him as your Lord. Take the first steps on a lifelong relationship with him and you will not regret it. If you want to do that now, here is a prayer that you can pray along with me. Let us pray. Jesus, I admit that I have messed up and that I need your forgiveness. I receive you as my saviour. Jesus, I believe that you are God with us and I want to get to know you better. Jesus, I trust that you know best how I should live and I accept you as my Lord. Please come and live in my heart today. Amen. Do, do contact me via the parish office if you prayed that prayer and you want to know more. We want to help you take that first step of welcoming Jesus into your life. But also as a church, we want to help you grow in your faith. We are all on a journey of faith in Jesus and we are called to support one another on that journey. Please don't feel you have to go it alone. Speak to someone who you know who is a Christian or contact me.
thanks to our Christmas choir and to Janice Elwood for directing them. As you will realise, it's been much more difficult this year doing the service online. And I'm very grateful too to Chris Bull, who's done much of the recording and also put the service together technically. Normally at this service we would take an offering and I encourage you this year to give to Crisis, a charity working with the homeless. There is a link on our website which will enable you to make a donation directly should you wish to do so. If you enjoyed this service, don't forget our other Christmas services online, the crib service at 3 o'clock on Christmas Eve and on Christmas morning there will be a 10 o'clock online all age celebration. There are also limited places available for the Midnight Communion and Holy Communion on Christmas morning which will take place here in church live and you can book for them on our website. Let's finish now with a prayer of blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen.
say